Okay, so in this part, we're going to take a look at actually binding uh, values to prepared statements, and then we're going to execute these statements and then uh, output a list of names, for example. So in this example, what we're going to be doing is allowing um, from the URL to define a last name. And what this is going to do is it's going to return all of the records in a database where we match a last name. But instead of escaping, we're going to bind this uh, bind this to the prepared statement. Now, what basically what we're going to be doing is performing a query, not performing a query, but preparing a, a query or an SQL statement, um, putting placeholders where we want data to be bound. And then when we get the result back, we're going to bind the result field to variables, which we can then output in PHP. So you'll see how this kind of flows and for larger queries and, and uh, depending on how you want functionality to work, particularly binding lots of different variables to a query, this um, is a lot cleaner if you have lots of binds that you need to take place. But we'll run through the example. And in this case, we'll just be selecting and returning a result set. You can do this for inserting. It's exactly the same thing. So let's go ahead and first of all, check if we have this uh, variable set, uh, this get uh, array value, uh, which is last name. So if that is set, we're going to create a variable called last name. And this is going to be get last name. And we're just going to trim this value. So remove uh, white space from the left and right hand side. Now, what we're not going to be doing is performing um, the the um, real escape string method on this string. There's no need because when we bind values, we're automatically protecting against SQL injection any, anyway. So we don't actually need to um, perform that for each variable, which is, again, a benefit of binding. Uh, we don't need to worry about that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a prepared statement and I'm just going to call this people. So that's going to equal db prepare instead of db query. Now the difference here is that when we prepare a statement, we don't actually execute it until we use the execute method. So in this case, what do I want to do? Well, I want to select um, and I'm going to choose a specific field set because when it comes to binding results, you'll see that we have to bind each field um, that we need. So I'm just going to choose that I want the first name and the last name. And I want that from the people table. And then I want where last name equals question mark. Now that might look a little odd. You might be thinking, uh, why are we using a question mark there? Well, basically, what we're doing is we're now going to bind the values that we need um, and assign their, well, use their data type um, to tell uh, this prepare statement what kind of data type we want and what, what value we want to bind to these question marks. So what we now do is we say people bind param. We define the data type. S is string. And we then define the actual value, which is last name. So what's happened now is we've prepared a statement. We've, bind, we've bound a parameter onto this statement. And what we now need to do is go ahead and execute that statement. So we now say people execute. OK, so what's going to happen now? Well, actually, nothing much. If we go ahead and say print r on people, we'll notice that we don't get too much back here. Well, we do, but it's a load of rubbish. So we've got affected rows minus one, uh, num row zero. So we're not really getting any useful information back. In fact, we're not actually retrieving anything at all. We've executed the statement, but we now need to bind the fields that we want to select to variables that we can make use of. So what we do is we say people bind value. And we say uh, first name last name. Now you can call these whatever you want. It do doesn't make a difference. But what's happened now is, um, is we've bound the values of the data that's been returned in correspondence to the position that they're in. So first name, this will be here. We could call this um, like, uh, not one because it's an invalid uh, variable name, but we could call this one and two if we wanted. It just makes a lot more sense to write first name and last name. Now what happens if we echo out first name? Well, let's give this a test and see what we get back. Oh, I think, uh, there we go, bind values. Okay, um, let's turn error reporting off. 
Uh, oh, sorry, bind result. There we go. Okay, so we can actually bind individual values um, as well. We don't necessarily need to bind just results, but um, in this case, um, in this case, we are. Now you will notice that nothing was actually output, and that's because we haven't fetched this. So if we just perform a statement uh, here or, or on this statement. Um, with a fetch method, we then get the, the first result back here. And we can do exactly the same thing that we've seen before. We can say while while people fetch echo first name, and then maybe put a break on there. Uh, in fact, we can actually, while we're at it, bind on the last name as well. So we should get two results back, and because we're in a while loop, we get the two results that we desire back. If we enter a name that doesn't exist in the database, we don't get any results back. Of course, we can do things like checking result counts and stuff like that, but we'll we'll ignore that just for now. So um, now that we've returned or we've prepared a statement, we've bound parameters, we've executed, we've bound the result back so that we can loop through the fetched results and output the first name and the last name in this case, um, what happens when we want to bind multiple parameters? Well, in this case, we're going to have to modify our code slightly just so we can, um, you know, change uh, the, the, for example, the, the query string so we can provide a first name and a last name. So let's provide a first name and a last name here. And let's also duplicate this. So we say first name. So now what we want to do is we want to say, uh, we could say where we want the first name or the last name to match. So let's say where uh, last name equals something or first name equals something. Okay, so now what we've done is we've 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 basically provided two question marks, which means we need we need we absolutely must bind two values. Now, if for example, um, ah, actually, let's make this a little more interesting. Let's change this to ID, and we'll say where or ID equals question mark and the reason being is that we'll bind an integer and a string rather than just a string value so let's just back up a little bit and look at what what we have going on here so we can say garrett here and um, this isn't going to run because we'll have uh, will have performed an error because we have two values that we need to bind and we're only providing one uh, string value. What we want is we want id equals one or something like that. See, so we get this error here. Um, or we want to say id equals two or something like that. Uh, so let's go ahead and modify this. So bind parameter string. Now you might think that you'd have to do something like this. But in actual fact, what we can do is we can just say s I, no comma separation or anything like that, and then we can provide an additional um, variable that we want to bind. So now what we're binding is we're binding a string and an integer, this being the string, this being the integer, at these positions, and then we are executing this, we're binding the results that we require, we're fetching the results, and we're echoing them out. So what we can do now is we, when we refresh, we see that we have Billy Garrett and Alex Garrett output. Um, and if I choose ID of one, in fact, the query doesn't really make too much sense. There we go. So um, in this case, um, there we go. So an ID of two and the last name of Garrett will uh, output this Billy Garrett record and an ID of three and the last name of Garrett will output Alex Garrett. So it really it depends on sort of how you structure your query. It doesn't really make sense to uh, go too much into this because different applications will have different queries depending on the data. Um, but basically we've looked at binding a single parameter. We've looked at binding multiple parameters, uh, executing that, binding the results back uh, and looping through the results set.